Those come in two styles. There's the style that meets on the shoulder. That's the Italian French style. Actually, um, no, that's, yeah, the Italian French style meets on the shoulder. The Spanish Belgium style meets it here at the chest. So this has both styles on it. And what I suggest is that you, for the kind that we're going to need, use, we need this because it's going to go over the shoulder and come down to the chest. So I suggest you cut out on the outside line regardless of what it is, whether it's solid or dotted. And then since we're, we're going to be using the dotted line ones, we'll, we can fold under the edge for, for this, this part and we can put slits here and fold it under okay. so that we get the piece we want. But then you have both patterns. Okay. Now when you do the second part, Here's your second piece of piece of paper. Um, but this is the small piece. I need that one there. This is the front of it. And again, you have two styles. You have the kind that meets at the shoulder and the kind that meets at the chest. Well, we want the chest one, but you can't really do what we're doing on this side. I suggest you cut out the, the, this one right on the line and save this piece. And then later, make a, a copy of this part of the pattern. You can use newspaper. You can use um, Joanne sells a kind of fabric for making patterns. Hmm. This kind of fat fabric. It's, you can see through it, it's all little blocks on it, one inch blocks. So that you, so you could put that on this pad, on this, trace it out, and then you have this pattern piece. And then tape the, tape the other two back together again. Tape them back together and cut out the, the whole thing. In case you want both. Alternatively, you can buy a second pattern from me. That works for me fine too. <laughs> so, um, so you need, but for now we only need this, this, the inside one of this. So keep the outside piece. You can cut out the outside one if you want, but keep the piece so you can tape it back to this one later and make a, a second pattern for it. Okay. All right. And then on these pieces, um, these, these are your small pieces, your chalice veil, your bursts your manifold and your stole. Um, there, notice again, there's two styles. There's the, with the stole and the manifold, there's the shovel style and the straight style. Cut the outside line, you can always fold over the, the excess fabric here, you know, the excess part of the pattern here, if you wanna make the straight style. Different priests have different preferences. And again, that's one thing, that's an option I would give a priest. Do you want the shovel style of the stole, or do you want the straight one? Um, some priests prefer one over the other. Uh, when you get to here, to don't um, when you get to this section, don't cut this out yet. I'm going to give you a, another burst. We we need more. We're going to this burst pattern is for uh, an open sided burst. That means it has no fabric on the sides. It opens like just two pieces of cardboard with a piece of ribbon in the side to keep it from opening too far. We're going to make a closed-sided verse. I only make closed-sided verse now. When I started making vestments, I couldn't figure out how to make a closed-sided verse, so I made open-sided verses. But I figured out how to make a closed-sided verse, and they're very simple. They're not that difficult to do. They look complicated, but they're not difficult if you follow my directions but we need more seam allowance on it and we also need a fabric, um, a pattern piece for the sides. So when you get, you can cut out the stole and the, the maniple, but leave the extra paper there and I'll give you the pattern piece to put on there. Uh, you, just, you need to extend, you need to extend that side and this side, this side all the way up to this and that side I think another inch. Um, and then use this piece here to cut your, your side your side pattern. So keep that 
keep that separate. The, this, the, these two don't cut out yet. You can cut these two out and keep that pa paper solid until I give you the pattern piece you can trace in there. All right? So then get, you can just cut these things. Um, the watermark runs this way. And that's usually the way you want it, it on your fabric. So you want to, I mean, you could, we could lay the, the, the pattern crossways this way. It would fit. Uh, I'm going to bet you it will fit. This is 54 wide. This isn't 63, but it's... Oh, so it's you're going to run the, the fabric... Of, uh, okay. If you ever, if you have questions, by all means, ask. Yeah. You know, it will fit on here. This, it, it's long enough to fit here. But the question is then, do you want the design, this watermark running this direction? I don't know. Uh, I, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Okay. I wouldn't. Okay. You generally want your, 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 it to run down the lane. tabs on the side. And we're going to cut slits in this so we can fold this down and still keep the other pattern. There's two patterns on this. There's the over-the-shoulder type and the at-the-shoulder type. So we're doing the over-the-shoulder type. So we're going to fold these in. So this, so this is what we want. All right, so we've decided we're going to run, because this has the watermark going this direction, we're going to cut it down this direction. Even though it would fit this way, you don't want the watermark running across it. This is, as I said, Mori Fail has this watermark pattern in it. Bengaline is the same type of fabric, but without the watermark. Both of them have been used for vestments for centuries. Um, for some of your oldest vestments, I can show you even in, um, are, are made from this type of material. It doesn't have really a, if you want to call this a pattern, unlike those that have a regular repeating pattern, this one has just the watermark sort of thing. So if we're going to run it down that direction, um, and we're going to cut this without any seam allowance, uh, you can pin it down and cut around it right now. But I'm always willing to bet you, because this was this pattern was traced from an old vestment, and they weren't always sewn, you know, they weren't always that regular. Let's fold it in half this way. If you fold this down the line that is the center of the vestment, you're you will find it's off some places. So what I do is I decide where, I, how I want to cut the pattern, how I, which direction I want to. If it has a pattern, we're going to put this line right down on the center of a pattern. In your case, we'll put it down on one of these watermark lines that run down the length of your pattern. And then um, we'll, we'll fold, we'll fold the, the fabric over. So we'll cut it on the fold so that both halves will be the same, uh, exactly the same. Now, so which are you going to cut, this side or, or this side? It doesn't matter, it's six of one half a dozen of the other. What I do is I take one of these and fold them out of the way and decide that's the one that's going to be the pattern. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so we know that this is going to use um, about this much there's a, there's a pattern here, there's a design coming down here. So if we've used that as the center of this design, we want to um, we're going to want to fold it on there, which means we have to cut the fabric here. So what I'm going to do is cut the fabric as far as that fold as far as where I want to fold it. And fold it.
hold it down the center. Notice there is a right and a wrong side to this fabric. If you look at it, this side is duller, this side is shinier. Generally, the right side of the fabric is of the inside of the roll. Some fabrics are reversible. Those are, with the pattern on it, are technically reversible, but there is a, one side always does look a little bit better than the other. So, we're just gonna line this up. Right down the middle of this. And down the middle of this. Once you find your middle, you should probably pin it there. So it doesn't move out of out of the uh, pattern piece is folded in half. On top of this, you do it this direction and you can do it the other way, it doesn't matter. Um, so that this is on the fold, you're going to pin it down and then you're going to cut around the outside of this. Pin it down and then you're going to cut around the outside of this. No seam allowance. Okay. As I say, the seam allowance is going to go on the line. Now, um, Jackie is going to be, which fabric did you choose? The small. So you want the small one. Now this has a pattern. When we do a pattern, again, you want to, you have you want to fold your piece in half. Now this doesn't really have a direction; it's the same both ways, and so it won't matter whether we cut it this way on the fabric or this way on the fabric. So we'll lay it however it makes the best use of of the fabric that we have here. the same in both directions. So this can go, this fabric can go either way. So we could cut it, you know, we could have cut it down the length of the fabric, like this. We're going to be doing double the width. So just, uh, there's plenty of room there for it before it runs out of room over there. But what this one, because there is a pattern in it, we want to go, we have want to decide whether we want this to be the center of the, the vestment 
or this pattern to be the center of the vestment. I like this pattern. This one? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's see where this lays then. Let's see, it's off the edge here. So you have to come in at least to that one. And you can move to here. So if this is going to be the middle of the vestment, this design here, then uh, we want to Again, cut the fabric so we can fold it over. Let's go a little longer then. Fold this fabric over there. And we want, again, we're going to use the pattern as the guide and come down the center of that design. Finding and putting pins in Can you hand me the pins? That way I don't have to bother him. He's in a perfect place. Okay. I'm going to have to pin the whole length just enough so that it wasn't maybe three or four places so that it doesn't move out of alignment. going to put your pattern on the fold, cutting up here. Now my question is, how do you pick the place so that it starts here, or just do you? At this point you don't. It, it, you really don't need to do that. When we go to this figuring out where we're going to put the cross, then you have to make a decision as to what patterns you're following. Okay. And pattern fabric is really nice to use because uh, it gives you a guideline for making that cross. It's unlike unlike the unpatterned fabric. You um, you have to chalk out your own lines because you can't. You don't have a pattern to follow. That's nice then that we're doing both types. Yeah, in the class. Yeah, you'll learn both both ways. So this you're going to you're going to pin this in place on the fold. Um, and then, now if this, the edge is, is not exactly straight, you can leave it in a little bit from the edge or overlap the edge a little bit. Um, again, I trace this off of an old vestment and it doesn't necessarily mean that the vestment itself was exactly symmetrical. Are you going to be putting? Are you going to be putting a cross fabric on it, or are you leaving it plain? I think I want to leave it plain. All right, then let's take a look at this. See the patterns here? Mm -hmm. Now this is your cross pattern, mm -hmm. and this is what you oh, well, were talking about. Are you about. asking me if you want me to put a cross? If I'm putting a cross on the back? This is the back. What I'm asking is, are you going to put a second piece of fabric on here, or are you just leave it I would one? like to, so that right. I have the experience working with the orphan. Okay. If you weren't, you and you were going to use this pattern, this is the cross pattern that goes on it. Mm -hmm. if you might want to line this up with patterns, patterns in your fabric. Notice this is crossing. If this is the center of this cross, you would want this to line up with the center of this pattern. Mm -hmm. or, so that these all cross pretty much the same spot on the outside the outside edge here. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to be exact because you can change that line. That line is not cut in stone. That line doesn't even have, you, that cross doesn't even have to be there. It can even have a blank, totally blank vestment. That you could mark and then I can sew, I could embroider if I chose. Well, on or the back exactly. if I chose. You could do that. Or you can just leave nothing on your vestment. There are blank vestments. I have one in there. And it's an older vestment and it has nothing on it. A lot of your Italian vestments, Italian style vestments, have nothing. They have no crosses. They have columns, such as the column, the trim making a column on the front and the back. They like these flashy, tapestry, flowery, tacky um, <laughs> fabrics. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not as, I consider it that way, but you know, what do I know? I'm not Italian. 
Repeat after me. <laughs> the customer is always right. Exactly. With, that's what they want. That's what the priest wants. And some priests do. That's what you give them. And you hold your peace. You can try and talk him out of it, but don't, don't criticize his judgment. Just say, well, you know, I think that fabric's a little, oh, don't you think it's a little, ask him, don't you think it's a little overpowering? You know, that all those huge flowers on the back of it? Oh no, I think that looks right. Okay. The funeral hall was two huge things and I got hung up and I couldn't make the two sets of patterns match. Okay. It didn't actually end up mattering, but it drove me nuts. Yeah. So, well, and, and that's one thing you're going to have to learn is you will make mistakes. And first of all, remember, this is probably your first vestment. And don't expect it to be perfect. It's, uh, it's, your first, it's your first vestment. And even people who have made vestments for years will still make mistakes. I do all the time. Yes, Gerard. Wait. I make mistakes. You got that on film? Okay, I make mistakes. <laughs> uh, but most mistakes are correctable. And also, the priest will never notice. Oh yes, my priest will notice, he's very picky. He won't notice. Generally, the priests do not notice. And occasionally, yeah, you have one priest who may, you know, be that, uh, you know, extremely sensitive to that sort of thing. <laughs> it's funny, I was just thinking of him too. <laughs> okay, but he's an exception, you know, that's, uh, and that's why nobody will sew vestments for him either. <laughs> you ever made vestments for him before? Uh, yeah, he's the Many? one who changed the design three times before ordination. Nice. And they had to redo the, or, the, the uh, embroidery three times. Anyway. Most, most, pe most priests won't see it, most people won't see it. But every time the priest wears, I guarantee that you, because you know it's there, every time the priest wears it, your eye will go exactly to the spot. There's, there's one priest, that was the one vestment that Marlene Mikowski made, and it's a, it's at the shoulder type, and when the neckline comes up, the trim for the cross comes up, it comes a little higher on this side than this side. And it drove her nuts, and she, I'm going to make, no, leave it alone. He won't notice it. He never noticed it. He's, they still wear it. Nobody notices it, but every time she's at Mass, she will look at it. And uh, a priest in, uh, priest in Virginia, lady made him a vestment, and she noticed that the pattern on the cross was off when she finished making it, and it bothered her. So she wanted, he didn't want an applique on the back. He just wanted the cross. And so she wanted to order an applique for me to put in there, thinking it's, it will hide the fact that the pattern is off there. And when he found out what she was doing, he said, no, leave it alone. I don't see what you're talking about. He, thought, yes, he didn't, and nobody else did. From a distance, most things are not noticeable. You know, the, that you use the wrong side of the fabric here instead of the right side of the fabric. Uh, from a distance, even the altar boys who are about 10 feet away won't notice Yeah, that. it will bother you, but get over it. You know, just, just decide you're going to learn from the mistake and the next vestment you won't. But most mistakes are fixable. Or you, you can hide them in some way or fix them. So, alright, so you, you're going to do the same thing with the other half of that, the other piece. Just put that aside and you're going to do the same thing, cut out the other section, which may fit, will probably fit right in this, in this area here. Again, you're going to run it down, fold it in half, and find the middle of a pattern, and, and fold